there are occasions when you're going to want a 2D sprite on the UI or another 2D element on the UI to correspond to the location of an object in 3D space. This might look like an enemy running around with a health bar over their head, or a floating marker indicating to the player that an object is of some kind of importance. So to be able to work out how to line up an object on the UI with an object in the 3D world, uh, you'd need to do a little math. So I have here a first person camera. There is a white barrel in the middle of the, in the, middle of the floor. Not really in the middle, but it's, it's here. Uh, no texture, that doesn't matter. There is a blue pirate ship out in the middle of the, in the actual middle of the floor, which I'm not going to be worried about right now. And my goal for this video is going to be having a spread on the UI follow the barrel around the screen. Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael the Wizard Dragon and welcome to World to Screen Coordinates. Those are the words that you would want to type into Google if you wanted to find results on how to do this. So I am going to drag a sprite into this project. Um, the volunteer for this demonstration is going to be this little duckling guy. Let's uh, zoom in on you a bit. So we're going to be using a duckling as our guinea pig here. Not an actual guinea pig, but... Um, all right, phrasing. Uh, let me run the game again. Uh, there's one small change I'm going to want to do before I set anything else up, and that is that when I drag the duckling sprite into the game, uh, due to the way that Game Maker likes to batch textures together, that is not exactly what we want to have, so I should have done this earlier, but let's go into the, the grass sprite, say separate texture page, check that little box, and, um, and run the game again, and things will be back to normal. That has to do with how... Uh, as I said, Game Maker just <clears throat> texture coordinates. That's a discussion for another day. So now things are back to normal. Okay. Next objective is I'm going to go into the camera object. This is a, this is a pretty bog standard camera object. I've I've set up all the 3D stuff. Uh, this is the grid representing the grass, the vertex format. This is uh, loading the going Mary from a vertex buffer instead of an OBJ file. And, uh, and then there's the player, I mean the, sorry, the barrel, uh, which gets drawn over, I think, at 100, 0, 0 in the room. Yes, at 100, 0, 0 in the room. And we want to have a, uh, if I can run the demo project again, we want to have a, a, a duckling floating over the barrel. Uh, and it's going to look something like this. I've got a couple barrels here with ducklings floating over them. That looks a little bit weird. That is possibly not the best example but it was the first thing that I thought of, and it's moderately cute. So let's go into the Drug GUI event, which I have not done anything with so far in, um, in, this, in this tutorial series. You can use the Drug GUI event for uh, anything that is overlaid on the 3D world, any user interface, as the name implies. Let's just draw some text in the corner just to show that this is working. That's going to make some text draw on the screen. All right, cool. Uh, for those of you who don't know the Draw GUI event, phone, shut up. That's the Draw GUI event. You can see the text in the corner of the screen. Uh, it is not being drawn in 3D space. So as I said at the beginning of the video, at least I think I said, we need to do a little bit of math. And fortunately for us, I'm going to call this world to screen. Uh, fortunately for us, this is math that has already been worked out by people. So um, as much as I am usually not a fan of just copying and pasting people's code, without reading what it's doing. That is mostly what I'm going to be doing here. I'll talk about the math at the end. I just want to demonstrate that it works first. So let me take this script, copy it into world to screen, um, unindent that. Erroneous indentation gets on my nerves a little bit more than it maybe should. Hey. And then let's go and use that script. So I will say screen position equals world to screen with the correct spelling. And it takes a couple arguments. Are the arguments going to show up in, in argument help? No, they're not because there are no, no js.comments that would actually make them show up here. So this takes a few arguments as, um, as you can tell. X, Y, and Z is the X, Y, and Z position of the object in the room. So where is that? That, was, that is these over here. Uh, 100, 0, 0, as I said. That's easy enough. Uh, the view matrix is the view matrix of the camera. That is what gets set to camera set view mat in the, uh, in the draw event. You can use the camera functions 
Camera get view mat. And camera get active. You can use these view functions uh, just to get the, um, the view matrix directly. I'd rather not do that because if you have more than one cameras running around, then you have to keep track of which camera is which. Um, what I would rather do is save the view and projection matrix matrices to, um, to variables. Um, we can give these an undefined value here. Uh, they will have values assigned to them as soon as, uh, as soon as anything draws. So matrices, I don't know if I've talked about this um, outright before, but you can save these to variables just as you can anything else. You can say view matrix equals matrix below look at. You can pass the view matrix, the variable containing the view matrix, I should say, into the, uh, the function that sets it. Same for the projection matrix. Phone. And then you can use them wherever you want. In my case, passing them to the world to screen function, I should make this a local variable, uh, the, the world to screen space script. And again, the reason that we do that, I will talk about later on. So what this function actually returns is an array of two values. If you are using the, uh, the GameMaker 2.3 um, update beta, you may wish to change this so that you, if you have a vector type, if you've, if you've created a vector type, um, it'll return a vector two or something instead. But as you can see at the bottom of the script, it returns an array of two values. Uh, so that would be the X position that the, uh, the 3D position gets translated to in screen space and the Y position. So let us make use of that. We can draw the sprite. I'm going to give this an actual name. Uh, we can draw the sprite, the duck sprite, um, image index zero, X position will be screen plus position. Um, that sounds weird to pronounce out loud abbreviated. Index zero is gonna be X as I said, and index one is going to be Y. So now when I run the game, we are going to see there is a duckling kind of on top of the barrel. Uh, I have forgotten when I imported the sprite to set the image origin to the middle center for one, and that's going to make it a little bit better. And uh, for two, the origin of the barrel model itself is at the bottom, so the duck is now anchored to the bottom. You may wish to, to move it upward a little bit. You may wish to say instead of um, translating 100, 0, 0 uh, from world space to screen space, you may want to make that like 100, 0, 20-ish. Should be good, that sounds good off the top of my head. Okay, so now the duck is kind of standing on top of the barrel. That's better. I'll go with that. And that's a really weird optical illusion when I when I back up and it looks like the duck is um bigger compared to when I'm farther away. Oh, optical illusions. Okay. I'm looking over at my uh, at my demo project over here and I see I I passed in uh, the Z position plus 16 to the world to screen function instead of 20, good enough. So you can do all kinds of things with this. Uh, you could say, instead of, um, instead of drawing a duck spray on top of stuff, you could say, draw text, X, Y, and the text can be, I don't know. You could draw this barrel's name is whatever. You could draw this barrel has however many points of health or whatever. Uh, that is, uh, that is again misaligned, and also the the color is the same color as the barrel, so you can't really see it super well. Um, the point is that you can do whatever you want with this, uh, with the world to screen space script. As I said at the beginning, floating markers, quest markers, health bars, really any piece of uh, non-diegetic UI. And I can now cross saying those words out loud off my, off my list of life goals. The math. make this full screen. I've got to talk at least a little bit about math today. So this is all matrix math. Um, I believe I've mentioned in the past a matrix in Game Maker made with matrix build whatever or matrix projection ma matrix uh, build look at. Those are just uh, an array of values. So in, in math, and if you're a fan of linear algebra, you've probably seen a matrix that looks like this. 
16 values arranged in a group of 4x4. Four four. In computers, since there is no such thing as 2D memory, and even if you have a two-dimensional array or a three-dimensional array or some other data structure like that, it's just a strip of memory in, a, in one dimension. In GML, a matrix is just a one-dimensional array of 16 values. In the case of the view and projection matrices, they contain values relating to what the camera is looking at and the, um, the size of the camera, uh, aspect ratio, field of view, clipping distances, those things. Whenever you draw something in a computer, uh, in 2D or in 3D, it will, send the, um, it will send the vertex information to the graphics hardware, and the graphics hardware will use matrix math much like this to, uh, to transform the position from a 3D space to a 2D point on, um, on the screen. If you've ever written shaders before, you've probably multiplied the, uh, the world view and projection matrices together by a vector 4 in some uh, way, shape, or form. And that is exactly what is going on here. You're taking an input position, uh, although it is not in the form of a vector since <sighs> GML. Hey. And it is uh, transforming it through the view and projection matrices into a point on the, uh, on the 2D screen. If you're reading the comments here, you'll see this is for a perspective projection, and this is for an ortho projection, orthographic projection. Uh, I have not talked about orthographic projections yet. To make a long story short, they're the standard 2D projections, stuff doesn't converge at a distance camera that you're used to working with 2D game development, and perspective projection is um, 3D. Lines converge towards the horizon. That's how we're used to interpreting the world around us in, th in three dimensions. And that's what's going on here. Um, the only difference, as you can see by looking at it, is that in a, project a perspective projection, the resulting point on the screen will be adjusted towards the middle of the screen, the farther away from the, uh, from the camera it is. This, this little divided by W here. Stuff is going to converge towards the middle of the screen. And I'm not going to get any farther into it than that because I have not taken a linear algebra class. And on a more relevant note to you as the programmer, the only thing to notice here is that in a perspective projection, if something is... um. If something is off the screen, it may return negative one one as the position. Uh, sorry, negative one negative one as the position. And now that I think about it, does it actually need to do that? Because if if w is equal to zero, and it would if if it were to uh, cause a division by zero error, it would also mean the object is zero distance from the camera. Let me comment this out and run this line. We're both going to learn something here today. Okay, so that's actually nothing bad is happening unless I were to put myself as zero, my camera a zero distance from the um from the point that I'm trying to convert to screen space. Okay, let me just do one more quick test to make sure that that is what is actually going on here. Okay, so we are actually going to try and and uh, convert. Okay, cool. That's Nan. So if you were to try to convert the cameras from position to, uh, to screen space, that would be a distance of zero. You would divide by zero, and um, this, this script returns nan, which is uh, not a number. Okay, cool. Let's see. I would like to... I should probably leave a comment in here explaining what this does instead of just removing it. So one last thing to mention, uh, depending on how your camera is set up, uh, you may find that you need to change this uh, the Y output position of 0.5 plus 0.5 times, um, times CY uh, to 0.5 minus 0.5 times CY. I found that in most cases, uh, plus 5 is how you want it to be, uh, is what you want the value to be. But if you're ever in a situation, if you've ever set up your camera in a certain way other than what I have, if you find stuff being positioned on the uh, on the bottom of the screen when it should be at the top, or on the top of the screen when it should be at the bottom, um, that just means that a sign is flipped somewhere, and you need to change, um, and you just need to change the plus to a minus. Another thing to note: this window get width and window get height. Um, this is this script is designed to work with a 3D camera that takes up the full screen, or a hey, for that matter, a 2D camera that takes up the full screen. Hey. If you're using a view, if you're using a split screen view or something like that, uh, you will probably want to convert this to a view get width or view and view get height or something of that nature instead of window get width and window get height. Okay, 
that's everything. Um, in my demo project, I had set up a couple barrels on the screen and put ducks on top of all of them, but that's not really relevant to converting world's, world coordinates to screen coordinates. You're all probably pretty smart if you want to if you want to have more than one um, object being tracked on the UI. Uh, I'm sure you can figure out how to do that. I'm going to stop talking now. As always, the uh, the link to this code project repository is in the video description. My name is Michael the Wizard Dragon. Um, I hope you found that helpful. If you want, I've recently gone and created a Patreon for these things. I'm going to try and put out at least one or two Game Maker programming tutorial videos a week for the foreseeable future, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Indie Punch and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to try and pronounce them out loud, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.